Um, we actually have a fan question for you. Um, All right. King, at King Cinematic would like to know, um, had you lived longer, do you think that Tiny would have stayed with Tomas and Andrew or gone with Axel and um, Oscar and Rick and the gang? Oh, man, Tomas was a dick. I was going to leave that dude's first chance I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that was that was something that was like in my mind when we, when we first got the character breakdowns and like what we were doing. Like, I knew that it was it was just because of the circumstances that that Big Tiny was even associated with Tomas. You know, it was it was more of Oscar and Axel and Big Tiny. You know, they were just trying to make it through however long they were going to be doing what they were doing. Yeah. So yeah, definitely awesome. So if you could have any celebrity become a Walker, which celebrity would you choose? Any celebrity become a Walker. Um. A couple come to mind. Um, so I don't know why, but um, there. So I used to watch wrestling as a kid. There's yeah. this guy Abdullah the Butcher. Yeah. Okay. I could have because he's already got like the fort marks in the top of his head yeah. and all that. <laughs> I could I could see him being a crazy looking Walker. Um, <laughs> That'd be intense. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be wow. Um, <laughs> John Stamos. John Stamos. <laughs> John Stamos. <laughs> John Stamos would be, uh, <laughs> it would be hilarious just for, just for me and my friends, but, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe share, share, share. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. That's a good one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people would be really interested as a walker. Yeah, definitely. Um, Do you have any special memories or funny moments from set you'd like to share? Actually, yeah. Um, so I can't remember what we were talking about. Oh, Irony um, had sprained his ankle like the summer before, right? Yeah. And his uncle was telling him about this home remedy, and he was talking like I think it was the first day we got there, and he was like, "He takes some red clay." <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, and that's just dirt. That's just dirt in Georgia. You take some red clay and some apple cider vinegar, and you mix it up, and you wrap it around your ankle, and you <laughs> and you give it like a, I think it said like a week, and it'll be better. And I just kept thinking like, that's the most random. What does dirt and vinegar have to do with a sprained ankle? And so I just kept joking about it. Like every time he was telling somebody about it, I would happen to be walking into the room. So all I all I would hear is, you get some red clay. And some apple cider vinegar. <laughs> and, and after a while, he would know it was coming. And he would like, watch this music. He gets some red clay. <laughs> and um, they did an interview for, um, for like, you know, just AMC behind the scenes or whatever. And they were looking at the scratch. And I'm like, you know what? If Rick would have just got some red clay and some apple cider vinegar, <laughs> it would have been all right. <laughs> they probably yeah, had no idea like, what you were talking about. Huh? They probably had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, that's irony. That's irony. He'll tell you everything. That's, that's <laughs> but, hilarious. Yeah. I'm a big fan of inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, so, what projects are you currently working on? We saw some stuff on the internet. Um, any movies? Any more TV? Um, I am. I have. I'm waiting on three projects to come out. I had a small part in a movie called Barefoot. Um, it's a remake uh, starring Scott Speedman. Oh. Um, there is Motel. I got to work with Robert De Niro and John Cusack and Rebecca DaCosta. Oh, awesome. um, I get, you know, I get to have a, a shootout. You know, I'm a big fan of stunt work. I love anything physical. Yeah, like that's another thing I loved about this part. You know, there's there's no stunt double for me, so I get to you know do all this really cool stuff, um, and then. There's a movie called The Starving Games. It's a, it's a spoof of The Hunger Games. Yeah. Uh, it's coming out later this year. And I'm really excited about that. That's going to be really, really fun to watch. That's cool. That's, um, that all sounds exciting. And I'm just, I'm at this point, I'm like I said, I'm moving to New York. Um, I'm going to train with the, the coach out there. And I'm looking for, um, you know, just expand my representation and all that stuff so I can get more stuff. So at this point, I'm talking to all my friends who are, you know, who have any downtime or just in the middle of doing stuff. I'm like, look, you want to write something? You want to do a, you know, a web series or something? Just 
stay busy and stay in the practice of doing, you know, doing what we do and, uh, you know, make something happen. Awesome. Very cool. That one with uh, Robert De Niro sounds awesome. So I think that's going to be really fun. I think that's going to be a good one to watch, too. Because, um, like, when you see Robert De Niro in this one, it's 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 kind of gaudy. It's kind of like I love looking at it. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, what inspired you to become an actor? You know, um, my mom, mom. I was. I've always been. Um, I've always been a performer. Mom, I come from a family of artists. My mom actually got me into massage therapy. Massage therapy part of me. She got me into art. She's a visual artist. Um, she makes jewelry. She does all kinds of stuff. Um, she sold pantyhose when I was a kid. Like, she does everything. <laughs> and she always encouraged me when I was younger. She um, I remember she had a job working for the Alliance Theater in Atlanta. And she got me in the youth acting program. Oh, okay. And so um, that was when it started. Like I really enjoyed that. And so she really pushed me. I think it's funny. Like Most parents are like, be a doctor or a lawyer. My mom's like, go do, do what you... And she saw early that was like, I'm... I was good at it, and so she really pushed me. Um, And when I got older, in, you know, 22, 23, I started performing with uh, community theaters, and I was doing musicals and stuff like that. And that's what really re-sparked it. That was where we kindled everything. And uh, I've not stopped since. Awesome. Very Uh, cool. So um, I don't know if your your mom will be the answer to this, but um, who's your biggest idol? Um... I don't have idols. I have influences, okay. and the world is my influence. Um, you know, as an actor, we we are blessed with the opportunity to to take a story and to tell as much of any part of it as we can. So, you know, I look at everybody. I look at you know the president. I look at the guy at the car wash. I look at a bum on the street. I look at you know John Cusack, Robert De Niro, all of them because everybody's got a story to tell. And at some point, you might be charged with the duty of telling that story. So. I, I look at everybody in every walk of life because, I mean, you, you never know who's been where, you know? You know, there's so many stories about different actors who were homeless and, and all this kind of stuff and, and didn't know how they were going to have the next bill and next, you know, they're winning an Oscar. So it's like, that's interesting in itself. You know, everything is, is a story everywhere to be told. That's a really good way to look at it. I like that. Thank you. Awesome. So, uh, can you tell us a little about being ranked number one as the ICMAC? <laughs> um, so, it's uh, San Shao is Chinese kickboxing. Okay. It's kicking, punching, and throwing. Okay. And uh, it's it's an amateur title. I won it in 2011, November 2011. And, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was a tournament in Orlando. Um, a lot of really good fighters from a lot of different places. I actually had to win, I had to go to the North American uh, tournament, which is the July before. And the funny thing is, like, I won't say I got robbed. I just, I didn't win the match. They, they felt that the other guy won it on points. And he was at the next tournament. He was like, I'm not fighting you again. I'm sorry. <laughs> doing it. So that was fun. I ended up having, to, um, in the final match, I ended up fighting, actually, the guy I rolled down with. Oh, um, really? Yeah. <laughs> He drove the bus. <laughs> so that was an awkward ride back. <laughs> but um, it's a lot of fun. I just I enjoy fighting, um, just to stay in shape. I've always been competitive. Um, I actually started out in judo. Like my judo teacher's in Atlanta, and he's still encouraging me to um, to to practice and to compete there. And I found a coach out here, um, Spider Hempill, and he's he was a former um, army boxing coach. He's a world champion kickboxer several times over um, and a great coach. And he he really pushed me to, to go for it. And so we went and I won. That's awesome. That's really cool. I think it's really interesting to talk to you. you you're so diverse. Massage therapy, acting, fighting. <laughs> so you seem to be into a lot of things. I don't like standing still. But I don't like being bored either. Like I like to... to get involved in, like, just whatever's actually going on. Like, I don't, if I were sitting in a cubicle still, I'd probably, I almost had a shot myself by now, but I'd, I'd have <laughs> felt like it. But, um, you know, I just, there's so much stuff going on. It's like, especially in New Orleans, like, 
there's no way I couldn't have gotten into all this stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at just the traditions, like Mardi Gras, you get people from all walks of life, like, just showing their ass, you know? <laughs> and, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like, I got involved with a group called the 610 Stompers, mm -hmm. which is uh, um, the <laughs> New, uh, New Orleans' first all-male dance group. Yeah. Okay. And so we we uh <laughs> we danced in the Mardi Gras parades. Um, actually, the year they started was the year that the Saints won the Super Bowl. So they started out in the Saints Day Parade, which really took things off and um gotten to perform at the uh, the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York. Oh. Um, got invited to perform for New Year's in London. We weren't able to do that, but um, I think we're going to be at the Kentucky Derby this year. Sweet. Um, yeah, so it's, it's and I mean, these are like doctors and lawyers and stuff, yeah. like powder blue shorts, gold <laughs> shoes, high 80 socks, and, and a red jacket, like just out there getting it, you know? That's great. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. So, um, some of the, your other castmates do conventions, like for The Walking Dead, have you been asked to do any conventions? Like I said, I didn't know about it at first. Yeah. Um, I actually ran into Nick Gomez at a convention here, and I'm looking around like, why hadn't anybody told me about this? <laughs> that was like late last year, and so um, actually I cut my teeth on the, um, a convention. Sorry, the truck passing. A convention, Days of the Dead in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, friends of mine were actually sponsoring it. I actually um, worked at a haunted house before I moved here, and uh, the haunted house was sponsoring one of the sponsors of uh, that convention. So I, I made a phone call like, hey, you know, you think you'd get me in on this? And they got me a table and I'm, I'm checking it out. And it's amazing. It's it's freaking amazing. Like, I, I've i done one more since and my calendar is slowly but surely filling up. Um, I, crossing my fingers, might be going to Canada soon. Wow. Which is, I've always, I don't know what it is about Canada, but I've always wanted to go to Canada. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. I think the second I set foot on Canadian soil, I'm just gonna like turn into vapor or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I just I, I'm so excited about that. Um, there's the um, what is it? Uh, Steel City Con in Pittsburgh. Um, there is I think Chiller in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, Fanboy Expo in Knoxville. There's a few of them coming up, and I'm very excited about each and every one of them. Like this is it's 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 also a chance to get to see people who are excited as excited about the show as I am, mm -hmm. and um, I think that's the biggest part. Like people, the the people who make it possible, the people who you know made what I'm doing worth doing. You know, so Very true. It's it's definitely a chance to get to, to see some of them and to interact with the people that I um, to talk to on Facebook and Twitter too. You know, it's like that's another thing I love. I find out about a lot of conventions through people who I interact with. Like, mm -hmm. Have you heard about this? We'd love to see it this one. Um, are you coming here? When are you going to be in Texas? You know, stuff like that. So I, I love taking those requests and I love hearing about, you know, who's doing what, where, because I want to come do it too. Definitely. That's very cool that you want to be involved in that. Absolutely. 